Hello and welcome to Crosstalk. I'm Peter Lavelle. Dealing with swine flu. Is it a genuine health threat or is it all about profit taking and a whole lot of media hype? To discuss this, I'm joined by Gregory Hertel, spokesman of the World Health Organization in Geneva. In London, we have Richard Weiss. He's the editor of the Health Service Journal. And another member of our Crosstalk team, Yelena Hanga. So this is a virus which everyone is susceptible to, and we don't know in whom it will cause severe disease and in whom it might just cause mild disease. So everyone needs to take a precaution against this disease. Doctors are involved in this, governments are involved in this, but also business is involved. How much is the swine flu pandemic related to Big Pharma? Well, Big Pharma, of course, plays a big role in the H1N1 vaccine. Uh, those vaccines that have uh, uh, elements uh, contained in them that have a lot of individuals in the, in the health uh, service quite concerned, and that includes the Marisol, which is uh, half comprised of mercury, and uh, something called squalene, which is a uh, fatty, oily substance that's used as an adjuvant in, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the vaccines. Now, we have had some cases where people who have uh, been administered the H1N1 vaccine have developed complications. There's even been reports of deaths from countries around the world. But uh, certainly Big Pharma has tried to defend uh, these uh, vaccines. And uh, th these vaccines were rushed uh, to the marketplace, uh, as many people will tell you in the, in, the, in the health community, without the proper testing. Even though the U.S. government says everything was tested properly, there's a lot of people within the medical research community that are saying, hey, time out. It, it did not receive the testing that other pharmaceuticals okay, received. Okay, this thing I'd, was uh, like basically short run. I mean, a lot of people die of the flu every single year. As, as far as I understand, a half a million people every year. I mean, why isn't that called a pandemic? Wayne, a lot of people are calling this a scam, this whole pandemic. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what needs to be looked at is the fact that the research uh, in H1N1, uh, we can trace it back to basically, it should be called the Jurassic flu. Uh, the DNA of a woman who died of the 1918 Spanish flu, the 1918 pandemic, was recovered from uh, her corpse. Uh, this woman was an Inuit, died in a village called Brevig Mission, Alaska in 1918. Uh, her, her, the DNA was used to recreate this virus, and some of the individuals, especially at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, are now involved in a process to develop the vaccine for H1N1. Uh, I don't think it takes a, a, a detective uh, 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 very much time to figure out that there could be a cause and effect relationship there. And I think that the uh, law enforcement authorities well, what, what? I mean, should be uh, looking in. Are they doing to, it for money? This connection. Is there a profit motive here? Is that what you're saying? Well, obviously they're making, well, they're, they're making a huge profit now in, in the process to, uh, to manufacture the vaccine. Uh, this company uh, as I said, is, uh, it involves individuals who were involved in recreating, bringing back to life the 1918 flu. And uh, people in the research community tell me that uh, the present pandemic has a lot of the DNA markers uh, from the 1918 flu. So uh, here we have a situation where somebody could be profiting from this pandemic. And obviously this is something that international law enforcement should be looking into. Shouldn't we be spending billions of dollars on that as well? Ordinary flu? Uh, money is spent on seasonal vaccine. Yeah, but much money more... Money is spent on seasonal vaccine. But we're spending a lot of money on the swine flu pandemic as well. Yeah, as your colleague in, in London said, there are campaigns every year against influenza. All countries realize the toll that influenza takes on its people. Unfortunately... Uh, for, um, from a public health point of view, uh, but fortunately from a point of view of individual rights, each person is free to decide whether or not they want to get vaccinated. 
Unfortunately, from our point of view, that sometimes has dire consequences. People die, especially a in seasonal influenza, the old and unfirm tend to succumb to influenza in seasonal influenza pandemics. Now, epidemics. What we are seeing now with the pandemic is that uh, people most affected are uh, adults between uh, 20 and 60. And so it's not the normal group who's affected because no one has an immunity to this virus. Have a look at how swine flu affects Russia. The virus A H one N one, commonly called swine flu, has spread around the globe, and Russia is no exception. According to the World Health Organization, Russia is a moderately affected country. It has already recorded over 4,000 swine flu cases in the last six months, while the seasonal flu outbreaks affect 27 million each year. At least 20 Russians have died from the new virus. To combat the influenza, Russian officials urged people to avoid public places and to wear special masks. They've also started on a campaign to vaccinate over 20 million Russians, a number that could grow if needed. At the same time, schoolchildren got longer holidays this fall in an effort to protect them from the virus. And though Russia's chief senator official Gennady Nishenko says the swine flu is no more dangerous than ordinary flu, Russians have a heightened sense of alert and face a significant rise in prices for anti-flu medicines. Wayne, what happened to bird flu, SARS? Did we cure them? You know, or was a lot of money spent on them as well? And who made a lot of money off of it? Well, the, uh, well obviously there was a, a great fear factor uh, with SARS and, and the avian flu, especially in Asia. The, the estimated cost to various economies, including that of China, are astronomical in number. Uh, I would note that the uh, Minister of Health of Poland recently made an announcement that she's concerned now that there could be a resurgence of the avian flu, and she's uh, pinpointing that between January and March of next year. So she feels that uh, there's been too much attention paid to H1N1. She's not going to invest a lot of money in H1N1 vaccines. She's looking at the next possible pandemic, and that's the resurgence of uh, avian flu. I would note that the people in the research community will tell you that H1N1 consists of what they uh, call a recombinant uh, a virus uh, uh, of uh, genes, two forms of human flu, two forms of uh, swine flu, and one form of avian flu. And it, it's uh, some people's belief in the research community that, th that this did not happen naturally, that this could have only occurred in a laboratory. But Wayne, either way, millions and millions of doses have been prepared here and purchased, and in many cases with the taxpayers' money. So it's kind of a win-win for the big pharmaceutical companies? Doesn't really matter. Oh, absolutely. Look, I mean, one of the legacies of the Bush administration is the fact that the Food and Drug Administration, which uh, basically approves new uh, drugs for the market, was was jam-packed with people from big pharma. So you had the industry regulating itself, and unfortunately, uh, Mr. Obama has not done much to purge these individuals out of the Food and Drug Administration. Facts about vaccination also get twisted. And unfortunately, this does people a disservice. This does people a huge disservice who otherwise would get vaccinated and would be able to protect themselves from uh, what could be very severe illness. We admit that in many, 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 many cases, 98 or 99 percent of, of the cases, people will have only mild illness or will recover. But there is this very small minority of cases that will progress to more severe disease. And I find it a shame that if things are blown out of proportion by certain um, people not relying on sound source of, in, source of information, that people will choose not to get vaccinated. And by choosing not to get vaccinated, especially if you are in a high-risk group, all you are doing is putting yourself in danger. Here, let's take a look at Mr. Brown. He's going to be up for re-election. 
or election for the first time, doesn't he, isn't he in a difficult position because he has to show that he actually cares, but he's going to be spending a lot of money. If I'm not mistaken, it's almost a billion pounds have been spent on this. I mean, it's certainly hundreds of millions uh, altogether. The, the planning for this actually predates Gordon Brown as, as Prime Minister. It, it's been going for some years.